each and every one of your parents it's it's crossed uh, i mean it's it's live we are, we are hosting this on zoom and uh, telecasting it live on our facebook page so inviting all of your families and friends to join our facebook page to motivate your child right this is not a competition i know that being training these children for the past four months i know that each and every one of them are special in their own unique way so v modern learning studio have been training over thousand students for the past few years and we've seen them perform and do amazingly well in their lives back at school so we we don't usually stick to the usual classroom teaching style we've taken a step away from it our classes are so much fun uh, i think the kids would have already told you about it so let's see what they have learned and i need to mention this to you we haven't uh, taught them a single word on their speech or adjusted any word it's their own unique creation we trained them to come up with their own unique speeches so this is their thought even we we had few rehearsals as well not that we didn't even though we had our rehearsals we didn't do any change in their own unique thought ladies and gentlemen before we start our speeches for the day i would like to invite the man behind modern learning studio who founded this institute for kids he's a child psychologist himself please give it up to mr yasmin mubarak Thank you, Adib, for giving me this opportunity. And I welcome all the parents and kids to Public Speaking and Communication Skills Finale 2021, right? I remember uh, when I was a child, my, one of my biggest fear, so I would say not one of my, my major fear, it was public speaking and speaking in front of the crowd. So actually, that was the reason I started this Public Speaking and Communication Skills program. So I remember, right, uh, because I'm sharing my experience with you all, uh, I would say if I get this opportunity around 20 years before or 25 years before, I would have gone to another level because it took me so much of time to get out from that public speaking phobia, that fear. So nobody helped me, nobody supported me. It's because of my own, you know, uh, struggle, struggling. And I was attending to so many self-improvement program and the workshop and the uh, seminars so after that i realized this public speaking and communication skill is something very important so if you want to become a doctor or engineer or lawyer or scientist so that is the traditional way so that as a traditional parents we always want our kids to become uh, a doctor engineer lawyer so like you know they can settle and they will be uh, in a prestigious place that's what we think but uh, the, being a part of 21st century, so our kids are with coming up with a different ideas, right? So they have uh, so many dreams. So many mean it's a big dream. So to achieve their big dream, they need certain supports. So I would say number one, they need the confidence. If anybody wants to reach their dream, so what they need is the first thing, the confidence. So many people, they are still, still living with their dream. Why they are still living with, with their dream? They are not living their dream. They are living with the dream. You know the difference. Somebody is living their dream and living with the dream is totally different. So why people are living with their dream? They don't have that confidence. They have so many ideas, so many, you know, super genius, a talent, and so many things in their mind. But they don't know to express their ideas to the entire world. So whoever becoming a champion, whoever becoming top class entrepreneurs, whoever becoming successful in the future, whoever can express their ideas. 
So they don't need any master or PhDs or degree holders to express their ideas. What they need is they need the computer. They need to identify how I can express my idea. So that is the reason we start a public speaking and communication skills program to realize who they are. Once a child starts realizing who they are, they can do anything. That's what they need, right? So I remember, right, so being a part of a typical traditional classroom culture. So only few kids, they get opportunity in our classroom. Only whoever becoming one, two, three, four, five, and whoever saying the answer. So other kids, it doesn't mean they are not potential. They have everything. But the thing is, they are not good at communication. Because of they are not good, good at communication, so that, so they became a backbencher. So not only the backbencher, in the life also, they started realizing, I can't do anything. Why? From the childhood. So that is the reason we started public speaking from childhood. We are teaching public speaking from five years. So some people are thinking, why public speaking? We have to start it from five years. So that's the reason they started realizing that is the reason they can start getting a lot of opportunities. Some kids started getting opportunity from three years, some are from five years, some are from seven years, some are from 10 years, some are from 15 years. If they don't have the skill, they are not going to grab that op those opportunity, right? We want them to take part in this 21st century. That is the concept behind this model learning studios, public speaking and communication skills. That's the reason they have realized, right? Uh, they have made it like a 4C. What is 4C? Number one, critical thinking and problem solving. Number two, creativity. Number three, communication. Number four, collaboration. So this was something very important. That is the reason main part is communication. So you can communicate with your children, you can communicate with your teachers or your colleagues, your friends or the entire community. You need that voice. So we are preparing children with voice. So like they can come up with their any idea. That's the reason we don't put any restriction. We don't ask them to come up with, you prepare your speech for this topic. No, we don't do that. I don't want to do it. So normally coaches, when coaches are asking, come, coming up and uh, saying, shall we give them a topic? I said, no, we don't, don't give them any topic. Ask them to come up with their topic. It can be anything. So that, that is uh, all about our public speaking. And th this is why we started public speaking. So thank you everyone, everyone for joining today's public speaking and communication skills finale. I wish you all the best kids. And also what I'm expecting from you, any of your kids are performing, any of your siblings, or cousins are performing, just give them a wish, send them a wish by, you know, greeting them and say, uh, sending them a voice note or just a message to them. Thank you, uh, Adib, thank you for giving me this opportunity. Thank you very much. That was Mr. Yasmin Mubarak, the founder of Modern Learning Studio. So uh, without further ado, I think it's better to give the kids the opportunity to showcase what they have prepared for the finale. So we have our first speaker today, Isindu Batagoda. Over to Isindu. Okay, thank you, sir. Let me go without, you cannot hear. When you don't give up, you cannot fail. Ranatunga Karunananda, does this name ring a bell? Unfortunately, most Sri Lankans aren't aware of him. I've got a vision he made us and thought that Sri Lanka is so remade in the Japanese school textbooks. Karunananda saw the great ability in her athletics for growing up. Even though he chose to become a soldier in the Ceylon army, he didn't got his dream of becoming a talented. Back then, he was the best long distance runner Silam had ever seen. This led him to represent our country in the 1964 Olympics at Tokyo. Today was October 14th of 1964, and everything was set for the men's 10,000 meters event. As the start of the under, he was suffering from bad cold, but still. He wanted to take part as he wanted to make the country happy. As he started, signal was by the starter drumming. The event required completing 25 laps. By the end of the first lap, Kanananda was 200 meters behind the rest of the 28 runners. While the other runners completed the 10th lap, he was running his ninth. 
by the end of the 20th lap, Count Ananda was the last place runner. But he did not give up. The race ended with the winners touching the finishing line. Mr. Karananda was still running his 21st round. After the other runners stopped running, he could have stopped too, but he continued running the last four laps alone. As he started the 23rd lap, a round of applause was heard from the audience, followed by a massive cheer. The whole stadium was round breaking with the chant, still on, still on, still on. Karananda ran the last 200 meters of his run. Though he did not achieve any medal, he won the heart summing at Paris all over the world as the true winner of people. Karananda's determination motivated the citizens of war, managed Japan, and the whole world. He had no hope of winning the event, but still, he represented his country, participated in the event and played it fairly as an honorable actor, because that's what the Olympic is all about. Media in Japan and all around the world talk about the Khan's courage and his self-confidence. So much sure that Chakra Gaudet, unsung Olympic hero of Sri Lanka, was added to the school textbooks in Japan as a life lesson to the children. Courage is the discovery that you may not be and try when you know you can lose. This remains forever in my heart. Thank you very much, Isindu, for that. You've been an energetic kid in class. So I'm super proud of your final performance. Thank you for reinstating about Mr. Karunananda, who was a true legend for Sri Lanka. So next we have Sajani. Over to you, Sajani. Let me ask everyone a question. What do you want to choose? Health or wealth? Actually, from my side, health is the biggest wealth for a human in his or her lifetime. Health is the first and the foremost foundation of everyone's lives as we cannot live without good health. One could survive without excess money but cannot live without good health. Health is something that we cannot buy from money, but we can take care of it and cure it with the help of money. Moreover, money doesn't make a person rich or happy, but health does. Good health is one of the main elements of happiness that the person needs in his or her lifetime. We can see various people happy with a lots of money. However, they are happy because they have good health and they enjoy their lives. We can also see lots of rich people that are not totally happy. Moreover, they are not satisfied with their lives. The reason behind the sadness of these people is mostly that they don't have good health. For an example, Steve Jobs, the founder of iPhone, had a pancreatic cancer. Even though he had access to the world's best medical advices and had no financial barriers for receiving any treatment, he didn't treat his cancer. In fact, he didn't even care about it. He waited too long to treat his cancer. So, at the end, he had to die. So don't think that your health is not important. Please take care of it. Normally, we think that we are healthy as no disease resides with us. But being healthy really means having a good state of physical and mental well-being while being free of diseases. 
if someone wants perfect health, there are some ways to maintain a healthy lifestyle. Your diet has a major role to play as you are what you eat. Exercise regularly, exploring nature and atmosphere is a good way to give your body the freshness it needs. Dozing off at the right time can relax your mind as you can sleep off between office hours. The key is finding the balance between your work and your personal life while reducing stress. You can also cater yourself by finding new hobbies. As told by Dalai Lama, happiness is the highest form of health. Happiness will only come when you are in good health. Finally, we all are aware that our health is the most important wealth there is. We can earn money once we lose it, but we cannot gain our good health if we lose it due to carelessness. Our health is the only world that we are born with. We even die with our health. Thank you for listening to my speech. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Sajani, for reminding that health is our biggest asset. Um, without further ado, let me welcome Taruli Bandara next. Does any one of us like to be slaves or to be imprisoned? Definitely, the answer may be in negative. But do you accept that sometimes we become slaves of our own emotions or the feelings of the heart against the wisdom or the rightful thinking of our brain? Control your emotions so your emotions don't control you, is a renowned invaluable saying. Thus, it is important to manage our own emotions without being slaves of them or being imprisoned within them. Irrespective of social strata, educational or professional backgrounds, management of emotions plays an important role in one's life. In dealing with management of emotions, emotions can simply be defined as the strong feelings originating from one's circumstances, mood, or relationships with others. They can be happiness, sadness, fear, anger, so on and so forth. All of us naturally inherit this common emotion. Good emotions are delightful, but unfavorable emotions may cause harm if they are not properly manipulated. This harm may affect not only the individual concern, but the society at large also. That is where the management of emotions comes into play. Have you ever thought how harmful the improper management of unfavorable emotions is? Its harmful effect may extend to scolding, assault, or even causing death. It may further expand towards unpopularity, frustration, and dissatisfaction in personal and professional affairs. Accordingly, for instance, there may be even high qualified professionals who have failed in management of emotions. Then what is of utmost importance is that how we can manage these emotions. Do you think that we can pretend concealing the natural emotions in a public forum in this nature? 
it is rather difficult. Your face is just like a mirror. It reflects your strong inner feelings. So, to fail in pretending. Therefore, many is the only solid answer for the question at hand. It is very easy. Some mechanisms are required to be adopted to neutralize the unfavorable emotions. Exercises to calm mind, association of friends, involvement in creative activities, for physical exercises are some such mechanisms. With the proper management of emotions, you can become an individual with a balanced personality, easygoing characteristics, attractive discourse, and you will be trusted and respected by others. Therefore, I would like to call upon all of you to engage in free arrangement, working to a timetable, developing self-confidence, following rules, regulations, and custom. Thereby, you will be able to manage emotions and to contribute for the betterment of the society. Thank you very much, Taruli, for that energetic speech. You've been an amazing student in class too. Next, we have Jana Asgar. Over to you, Jana. Do you think it's okay for children to be on social media at such a young age? Social media is a rapidly evolving platform for young people to communicate with each other, express themselves and share content of all kinds. Spending time online is important for the younger generation. Nowadays, to pick up necessary technical skills, they will need to navigate their way through the future. However, a popular opinion of the impact of social media is that it does more harm than good. Social media, how um, it's needed to navigate your way to the future. However, a popular opinion of the impact of social media, the most well-known downside of social media is mainly the addiction it creates. Youngsters addicted to social media end up wasting a substantial amount of time um, watching videos, photos, and other content. This addiction disrupts other activities such as schoolwork, sports, and studies, and other productive routines. They end up wasting a lot of time every day, resulting in poor grades in school. Social media has the ability to capture and scatter your attention. It not only does it, this lead to poor cognitive performance, but it, it shrinks part of the brain associated with maintaining attention. Students who attempt to multitask, checking social media sites while studying, show reduced academic performance. Their ability to concentrate at the task at hand is significantly reduced by the distractions that are brought by YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and etc. I fear the day that technology will surpass our human interaction. The world's generation will be different, said Albert Einstein. A part of social media addiction can also lead to all kinds of um, websites and others, apps such as Blue Whale and et cetera. Platforms like these have led to multiple incidents which have put many lives in danger and have even caused uh, people to take away their own life. In conclusion, social media has bad effects that along with the good, and we must make it a challenge to cut down the time we spend virtually and focus on our goals and the great opportunities we will face in real life. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jana, for that, uh, for that speech. Next, we have Hesali Ratnayaka. Please welcome Hesali Ratnayaka. Global warming. What is 
global warming. Global warming is the gradual increase of temperatures Earth's and atmosphere. Over the past century, the average temperature has gone up just over one degree. This may not seem like much, but many scientists agree that Earth's temperatures are starting at a faster rate. What caused it? Global warming is an aspect of climate change different to the long-term rise of planet's temperatures. It is caused by increased concentrations of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, mainly from human activities. Some examples. Power plants and oil drilling. How to protect our nature from global warming? Reduce water waste. Saving water reduces carbon pollution too. That's because it takes a lot of energy to pump, heat, and treat your water. So take shorter showers and turn off the tap by brushing your teeth. The EPA estimates that just this one out of every 100 American homes were retrofitted with water efficient fixtures, about 100 million of 100 million about 100 million of electricity per year would be saved. This is a little message from Greta Thunberg at the UN. My messages will be watching you. This is all wrong. I shouldn't be up here. I should be back in school in the other side of the ocean. And yet you come to us young people for hope. How dare you? You have stolen my dreams and my childhood with your empty words. And yet I'm one of the lucky ones. People are suffering. People are dying. The entire ecosystem are collapsing. We are in the beginning of a mass extinction. And all you can talk about is money and fairy tales of the eternal economic growth. For more than, for, for more than 30 years, the science has been crystal clear. How dare you continue to look away? So let's come together and stop global warming. Thank you. Thank you very much for that speech. Next we have Madiha. Over to you, Madiha. By right, the greatness of a nation can be judged by the way its animals are treated. By Mahatma Gandhi. In course of wildlife, wildlife is an important role in balancing the environment and provide stability to different forces of the nature. The nature has been largely associated with humans for emotional and social reasons. Animals have also been highly useful to us in providing food, clothes, and source of incoming in our life. It plays a very crucial role in our life. Wildlife makes a big impact on agriculture development because animals such as cows, buffaloes, etc. It helps in growing or tilling of the soil. Also, many microorganisms such as reptiles help increasing the fertility of soil and providing a good base for agriculture activities. Why should we protect wildlife? By protecting wildlife, we are making sure that future generations can enjoy our natural world and to protect wildlife. It's important to understand all living things interact within the ecosystem and how they are affected by environmental and human influence. How do we protect wildlife? By, pro by protecting wildlife, keeping the environment and surrounding of wild animals clean, which can be very harmful to wildlife. It can also save wildlife. Plastic bags and wine can eat trap birds and other small animals. So put on your gloves and grab some trash bags and pick up the litter to protect wildlife. I would like to share a short story about the trap elephant. A few years ago, there was a village around the riverside. It was a beautiful place. One day, there was an elephant coming through the village side with water from the river. Then, the baby elephant was excited when he saw the village around the riverside. And he ran. When he is running, 
she slipped to a wood and fell into a hole nearby. The mother elephant tried its best to pull the baby out, but she couldn't succeed. The baby elephant and the mother elephant were trumpeting and holding each other's trunks. Villagers heard elephants cry and rushed to the direction. With greatest difficulty, tried to pull the elephant out. After some time, the baby elephant was freed from the hole and went out the hole and went out of the hole and went to drink water from the sea. Village actions help wild animals. We don't belong to the planet. We belong to it and we must share it with our wildlife. Thank you everyone for listening. Have a great day. Uh, thank you, Madiha. Let's uh, take a look at the screen for a moment. Helping children find their voices. Public speaking and communication skills for children. Brought to you by Modern Learning Studio. Thank you very much, uh, Madiha. And we have someone joining us all the way from the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Over to you, Arib Razmi. No, what is entertainment? Do we need it? Is it useful for our life? Let us, let us begin with what is it? It's a special activity done by every human in the world, or sometimes even an animal. It provides us exercise, leisure, stress, and interest. Entertainment can be done by getting entertained by someone or something. No one can live without entertainment. There is no entertainment, it becomes a boring world with no color to it. People would rather die than live in this world. Let's go back to some history. Entertainment has changed throughout the timeline. 1980, there was not much of entertainment. There are all the physical activities and board games that we have in our modern life, such as chess, Ludo, and Monopoly. Going to the 90s, entertainment has developed quite a bit because the radio was invented. With the radio, you could connect with all other people in the world, but without a specific address. Coming to, 20, coming to the 20th century, entertainment has developed widely through one sort of thing. Any guesses? Well, that is technology. You may all have noticed that in our day-to-day -day life, the technology has improved from small mobiles to virtual reality. They help us connect with people all around the world. Shia media, thoughts, and memories. But what I stated before were only advantages. Well, what about the disadvantages? Yeah, that's right. There can be disadvantages with technology. Let me start with the story. A mother was turning her baby around the park. They are in a telephone. A few seconds later, a stroller starts strolling itself down here. And the mother doesn't notice it since she's jailed by social media. A passing boy notices the stroller and runs for it. He stops it, 
Rinse it back. It's all right. And what does the mother step like? Nothing. So you see, technology can be dangerous to entertainment. Because it distracts us from the outside world instead of distracts us from the outside world and stops us in being responsible for what we have. But that's only for some occasions. To conclude, like I said before, entertainment has influenced humans all around the world. Let me end with one final thought, which is a very important a wise man once said, live your life now from age one to age 13, because during that time, you will be able to have as much as entertainment as you want. And when you pass from the age of 13 to adult, you will not have much time to maintain it since you will be stuck in responsibility, studies, and education. So I urge all of you to have entertainment now, right now, so that you can have good memories, smile in your future. Thank you. Thank you very much, Arib. Next we have Kehansa Madugala. Over to you, Kehansa. How does the internet help students? Well, let me tell you how. The internet is a global network of billions of computers and other electronic devices. From the internet, you can communicate with people around the world, find information on things, and many more. For the past year and a half, the internet has come to a great use for everybody, especially for children. For almost two years, children have been doing online schooling and they have become so familiar. They get to learn online, play games online, and even talk with their friends online. But when you look at it like this, the internet is a great use for everyone. Leaving the good side alone, a lot of children in the rural areas don't have all the facilities we have. They don't have the connections. In fact, they have to climb rocks and trees just to get connections. They don't have the devices, and mainly, they don't have anyone to teach them how to use the internet. So instead of complaining about things we don't have, we should be grateful for all the things we have. As Maya Angelo once said, be present in all things and be thankful for all things. The internet can also be a little harmful for our health. It can cause eye strain, headaches, and many more. So limiting the screen time is what should be really done. Now we know in situations like this, the internet can be our best friend. Thank you very much, Kehansa. Next, we have Sania Wahid. Over to you, Sania. What is success? Success means happiness, or it also means an accomplishment you have achieved in your life. What is the key to success? Well, success does not come easily. You have to work hard to become successful, and you also have to commit. David Bly once said, Striving for success without hard work is like trying to harvest where you haven't planted. What is commitment and what is hard work? Hard work means putting a lot of time and effort to what you're doing. And commitment is when you're dedicated to something. Commitment is what transforms a promise into reality by Abraham Lincoln. Some ways to become successful. Building a growth mindset. There are two types of mindsets growth mindset and fixed mindset. 
people who have growth mindsets believe that things that you can learn, grow, and change. And they always find ways to escape. Fixed mindsets. Fixed mindsets believe that a change is unchangeable and hard work is a consequence. Setting goals. It's important to set long-term and short-term goals. When you set goals, you have a purpose in life and you can work towards that. It also motivates you. Stick to your commitment. If you say you can do it, do it. And don't tell someone you can do something if you can't do it. It's important to be honest about your limits. Having confidence in yourself. Confidence is when you believe in yourself and you know that you can do it. Sabrina Carpenter once said, confidence is the most beautiful thing you can possess. To become successful, you have to be confident. Never giving up. Never giving up is probably one of the most important things. If you are going to achieve goals, you have to never give up. Winston Churchill once said, never give up on something you can't go a day without thinking. A good example is the world number one men's ranked tennis player, Novak Djokovic. He never loses. And even if he loses, he still has a smile on his face. He had to face a lot of hardships when he was small. Like when he, in Serbia, when he, it was war time, he and his family had to spend loads of hours in the basement. And that's, he said that that gave him more determination. And remember, if you fail, just get back up and try again. And remember, do what you love and love what you do. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sania. Um, if you're watching us on Facebook to encourage the kids, please drop a comment below for their motivation, which will mean a lot to them one day when, we, when they look back at these comments on their public speaking finale. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, next we have... Yanojan Rajendran. Pay less attention to your mobile phones and more attention to yourself. During the past years, technology has had a drastic change. When we hear the word technology, we automatically think about smartphones and social media. But, that, but that's not all about technology. Booking tickets to travel overseas in the past was a huge procedure. But now it's just a few taps on your mobile phone and your tickets are booked. Faster communication, effective manufacturing methods, and many more positive impacts have been added to society due to technology. Technology is a useful servant, but a dangerous master. During these days, most of the headlines of the news are young students who have committed suicide. I would like to share one true incident which has taken place in the present. A young student had committed suicide as he was restricted to play online games as his exams were coming closer. This incident well proves how technology has rapidly consumed the lives of men, women, and even young teenagers. Relationships are hard enough because conversations had become texting, arguments had become phone calls, and feelings had become status updates. Technology has revolved communication like nothing before. Nowadays, two people from different countries can communicate easily without no technical difficulty, but, but the communication with the people next to us might be getting weak. What are the benefits which, we, which could be gained in 
face-to-face -face communication and how are they restricted in online communication? First, misunderstanding. When it comes to online communication, we are unable to judge the facial expressions of a person and eye contact, which may lead to misunderstanding of their feelings and expectations. Second, technical difficulties. When it comes to online communication, there, may, there can be errors due to some, some connection issue. This may lead to breaking of the effective communication chain. Third, online, online platform and stage fear. Online platform has restricted stage fear like nothing before. But when it comes to stage, live stage performances, our stage fear might have really increased. When it comes to face-to-face -to -face communication, we could easily judge the person's eye contact, which may lead to not misunderstanding of their feelings. And in face-to-face -face communication, we learn to accept new perspectives of different people, as perspectives vary from person to person. I would like to conclude my speech by saying, you can't download time, you can't upload kindness, you can't Google all your life questions. You must actually live some of your life. Thank you very much, Yanojan. Next we have Arham Ishak. Over to you, Arham. We have all grown up in this era where we find the emergence of video games and the likes of online entertainment, online, online entertainment and television. The creativity is endless in the digital world and so is the vastness of content. Have you ever wanted to live in and immerse yourself in one of those fictional worlds you've seen? I sure have. And with virtual reality technology, I think that that might just be possible. Virtual reality was a term first used by Jared Lena in the 1980s. He was the founder of BPL Research. But the introduction of virtual reality technology is not only for entertainment. Virtual reality technology can be used for many and more purposes, such as to simulate flying a plane without the real thing, or uh, it can be used with cars in a similar manner. There are actually a few different kinds of virtual reality available at the moment. There is fully immersed virtual reality and mixed or augmented virtual reality. Fully immersed virtual reality strips away your surroundings completely and takes you to a completely different world. On the other hand, augmented reality uh, adds holograms and other information that helps you to achieve your task. It will be interesting to see which of these technologies play out to be the norm in the future. As with any revolutionary technology, there's also a negative and an unknown side to virtual reality. Just as we are seeing with smartphones, they can become highly addictive. Uh, they can become highly addictive. The adrenaline and joy of living in your virtual world can make people prefer the virtual world over the real world. And this can become a big problem in teenagers. Like what kind of parent wants their child to go out on the road and play Assassin's Creed just because they can't tell the difference between virtual, virtual laws and real laws? Will children even be willing to follow virtual real laws when they are breaking all the virtual laws. We don't really know the gravity of this situation and it really makes virtual reality look more and more like a double-edged sword. In conclusion, I would like to say that we have been here before with the smartphone, with the automatic pistol, and even with the printing press. 
And in all these situations, these technologies have brought more good to the world than bad. So therefore, I am sure that if, if we are careful and if we are confident when we need to be, we can virtual reality work too. Thank you. Thank you very much, Arham. Next, we have Dulita Jaisingha. Thank you, Dulita. We have our own hobbies, but my favorite hobby is collecting hot wheels. Now, I'm going to ask some questions from you. I hope the answers already in your mind. First one I'm going to say is, which year does Hot Wheels introduce? Hot Wheels introduce, the year it introduced is 1968. And next I'm going to say is, which country does Hot Wheels introduce? The country is America. And next, who made Hot Wheels? Who made Hot Wheels is Elliot Handler. And next, what is Hot Wheels famous for? Hot Wheels famous to collect. They are, in my knowledge, in 100 Present 60 percent now to play with them, but there are more 40 percent left. They know the expensiveness of it and the popularness of it, and how the value of it. Don't forget, everyone, Hot Wheel famous to collect. And this is a question you all have. Can you tour the Hot Wheel factory? When you see the Hot Wheel cars, the models, you think maybe someday I go to America and go to the factory and see the all types of cars. But actually, I have to say a very bad news. You never think to go there because you can't go there. It is a private factory. And sorry for saying this, you never can't go there or have a tour. And finally, I'm going to say why I like to collect them. I like to collect them because of the value of it and how much payment for going to this and the popularness of fit. And this is another question you all have. Why, which day you start to collect them? I start to collect them after my scholarship. And ladies and gentlemen, now I'm going to show my Hot Wheel collection. See? You can see uh, many types of cars, and there are more cars in front. You see five cars in front. In these two cars are the real world cars. This is a Mazda car, and this is a BMW car. And you see more three in front. These are the valuable cars and the expensive car and the real cars. And next, I have a question. I show now three cars. Which car is the, is the uh, popular and rarest and expensive car? You are absolutely correct. This car, I, would, I can say, this model 
is the rarest car. You think maybe it may be made, the tires may be made by this plastic and the up parts mean the body part made by metal, original metal. You all are correct. But using cars, using rubber tires, then they serve it too. I can prove it, see? Hmm. See, this is the front tire. And this is the back tire. It's just like a car being minimized. And I hope someday I will be a top 10 collector. And thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Dulita. I hope that you'll be one of the best marketeers in the future to sell, uh, sell vehicles, right? Wishing you all the very best. Next up is Kirthikan. Over to you, Kirthikan. The destroyer. Who is the destroyer? In fact, aliens or disasters are not the destroyer. Truly, the humans are the destroyer. Destroyer of Mother Nature. What is nature? Nature is a basic or inherent feature, characters, qualities of something. Mother Nature spread out countless wealth all over the world. And the world is full of gifts of nature. And man was created to live in a harmony with the gifts of nature. From food to drinking water, nature plays an important role in human life. But in recent times, nature has faced immeasurable threats. A great man said that, look deep into nature and you will know everything about it better. If we want to control the problem, first, we must know about nature. The globe is rich in vast expanses of land, surrounded on four sides by oceans, lush forests, scenic waterfalls, and turbulent river. If this nature does not thrive, the human race will perish. It is very important to protect such a special nature. Pollution. Pollution considered natural pollution due to a variety of factors such as land, water, and air. Soil. Soil is cut off when waste is burned or buried in the ground. In addition, soil contamination occurs when chemical pesticides are sprayed on crops. Water, which plays an important role in human life, is polluted by the dumping of sludge and industrial effluents into the aquifers. And the aquifers are not properly maintained. Air, this air is polluted by the mixing of exhaust fumes and toxic gases from the chimney. Natural resources are being exploited by deforestation and mineral exploitation. Conservation of nature is the chief duty of each individual. Different legislation has been enacted in each country to limit the use of natural resources. As a result, various safety measures are being taken and World Safety Day is being observed on July 28 every year. All human beings must use the nature in limited quantities as needed. Use water sparingly and reduce the use of polythene and plastic as a whole. We also need to cut down trees and grow as many trees as we can make the earth green. In this artificial world, man is running in search to regain, run, running in search of nature to regain his peace of mind. The days were gone that we lived with nature. Today, man was facing the situation to going on a trip to see nature. There is a danger that the human race will become extinct along with nature 
if this situation continues. We may, the, we may keep the natural resources alive for the future generation and use well. The earth belongs to living, not to death. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kirtikan. Let's take a look at this video. If you're watching us on Facebook, on our page, Modern Learning Studio, please don't miss out to drop a comment on the comment section. It will definitely motivate these kids. Um, the words might inspire them to do a lot more of these. Next up is Joshua Jayawadana. Over to you, Joshua. The single most important key to success is to be a good listener. Hi everyone. Today I'm going to speak about uh, the future key. Now you'll be like, oh man, this is going to be a nightmare. But to let you know, today is going to be a life-changing day to you and to myself as well. So, success is the future key to the undistributed do called future. Winning future is a hard thing. It's even more harder than you think. If it's not that much of a deal, every human being would have been like Elon Musk, Mark Zuckerberg, Bill Gates, Dwayne Johnson, and so on. But success needs effort. If you have a dream and you dig a path towards it, life in the future is going to be very easy. But if you waste time, life in the future is going to be very tough. So keep fighting. But if you really want to give up, think to yourself of Rolls Royce. Because it takes six weeks to build one. And it takes only six hours to build a Toyota. So success takes time. Once a wise man said, the road to success is always under construction. So yeah, it's totally true. It's very simple to get what you want, but it's not easy. But if you work hard for it, it will be all yours. Something I learned in life is that you can never bring someone up unless if they want to. No matter how good you think you are, if they don't want to get up, there's nothing you can do about it. But the reverse of it is probably possible because in today's world, negative thoughts are way more powerful than the positive ones. So I say, stay away from the negative people. When I personally see such a person, I will walk away. People such as young ones nowadays has ruined their lives by pay, uh, wasting time on social media or playing games. Talking of games, if you are uh, planning to live in a bright future, you must also know how to manage and customize time. The basic difference between the rich people and the poor is that the rich people, they do not sleep eight hours a day because they think if they do, they might lose some amount of money. So they sleep less and work hard. The Bible says, he who loves to sleep through the hand, folding hands of handy poetry will set upon you like thieves in the night. So ladies and gentlemen, time is free, but it's priceless. You can use it, but you can't own it. So now let's move on to another main topic where everyone has a question. Problems. So y'all might tell me, what can we do? We have so many problems to deal with. But the real problem is that you don't have any problems, but you think you do. So now y'all might be listening to me now on a 100,000 rupee worth phone or 200,000 rupee worth uh, laptop. So you don't even know what problems are. Face it. There are people who, uh, there were people who didn't even have a roof on top of their heads then they began their journey, but they still succeed. So why can't you? We all have a bad day now and then. And sometimes life can be bluntly unfair. But hey, with a nice family, some great friends, some exciting challenges, you can come a long way already. So don't complain about the things that you're not capable of, but show the world what you are capable of. Because life's too short, live the most of it. A successful man is a person who can lay a firm foundation 
through the bricks that people had thrown at him. Until next time, adios amigos. Thank you, Joshua Jayawardena. And next, we have our final speaker of the 12 plus public speaking finale brought to you by Modern Learning Studio. Ladies and gentlemen, um, we have Kavinaya up next. Over to you, Kavinaya. Always look on the bright side of life. COVID-19, the brightest side. The coronavirus pandemic has a lot of dark side. Around the world, people get ill and die. Schools remain closed, workers lose their jobs, hospitals are overloaded, and countries have to spend a lot of money on medical aid. For everyone, COVID-19 virus is a worrisome disease that brings fears and uncertainty. No matter how serious and sad all of these are, they are a bright side as well. Therefore, along the Monty Python thought, always look on the bright side of life. Let's not forget those and make the best of what the crisis gives us. There are not only threats, but also opportunities as well. I mean, general opportunities that are available for most people affected by this crisis. In today's busy world, time is often seen as the most valuable and limited thing we have. COVID-19 shows why? Because we have tightly stuffed our week with school days, tuition classes, and entertainment such as going to birthdays, parks, trips, and cinema. Suddenly, all of these are cancelled or forbidden, giving us lots of extra time. And still, life goes on. This shows us how easy it is to clear our calendar. The opportunity is that we can spend this freed up time on other things or even better. Instead of enjoying the extra free time, many people fill it immediately with other activities. Rearranging how we spend our time and reserving time on nothingness would bring us peace. Not just during this crisis, but also after it. The pandemic has slowed down the pace of our life less rush, more free time, and possibility to engage in self-fulfilling activities. If it not for COVID-19, I would have spent my time playing with my cousins and friends. But now, I'm stuck in my home as my school remains closed and my parents don't let me go out. But staying home alone helped me to discover my hidden talents. I found out that I can draw very well and superb at quilling art. The lockdown period really helped children to learn new things and knowledge. I learned knitting, cooking, and jewelry making. Not only children, adults too had time to learn new things. My mother learned preparing delicious dishes and cooks better than before. No longer we need to spend time on traveling to our tuition. We can choose talented teachers wherever in our country and learn from them 
the virtual platform. Earlier, when we children go to supermarket with our parents, whatever we find interesting, we used to buy with our parents' hard-earned money. But now, we are forced to get the goods online. We have learned to buy only the things which we really want. I think this online shopping will be the trend in future. Prior to COVID-19, we used to get our foods from restaurants. And thanks to COVID, they are now closed. And we now prepare them home and have healthy foods together. The good things are not only for us, for the environment too. Due to closure of factories, and road free of cars and other vehicles, the air pollution level has very much reduced. We are able to enjoy cleaner and refreshing environments. Once again, COVID-19 crisis has a lot of dark sides. If we keep on looking at the brighter side of life, chances are actually making changes to a deeply rooted habit and conviction. We are a race of survivors and we are going to win this nice struggle too. All know that is hard and long, but let's look forward and focus on the brighter side. Stay physically distant but socially connected. Please take care and be safe. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kavinaya. Everybody, let's take a look at this video. Preparing children with 21st century public speaking and communication skills for children. Accelerated reading program for kids. Total development program for kids. Personalized coaching for children. 21st century preschool program. Global virtual preschool program. Speaking. Reading and Science Club. Sri Lanka's first ever student centered learning center. Modern Learning Studio. Join us today. So that marks the end of the PSK, the public speaking finale for the 12 plus age category. Um, as the coach of this Saturday batch, morning and evening. From tomorrow onwards, I'm sure that my Saturdays are going to be boring. You are such an amazing bunch of students. Thank you very much. And I'm super proud of each and every one of you. And I'm, I'm sure that your parents are proud of yourself too, because this speech, you have written it and you did it in front of an audience without anyone's help. It's your own creation. So you need to be proud of yourself as well. So that marks the end. And I need to tell you that Modern Learning Studio is organizing a public speaking championship, a world championship, where students from all across the world can take part. So do check out our social media platforms and register today because you will have a bigger opportunity to perform in a world platform. Also, uh, Modern Learning Studio has a club for speakers, which is called the iLeads Club, where students, after the public speaking program, they enroll to the iLeads Club to keep the momentum going to keep practicing their speeches, to exchange ideas, to improve further. So I would like to invite each and every one of you to register to the Public Speaking World Championship, also to the iLeads Club. Till I see you next time, take care and good night. Helping children find their voices.
public speaking and communication please skills remain. for children brought to you by Modern Learning Studio.